What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome back to another Football Manager video. Today I've got for you guys an introduction to my Rise of a Nation series which is going to be taking place in FM19 in, as you can see on screen, Canada. Yes, this is going to be a long-term save over the summer uh, that is going to be coming to the channel and I want today to talk about the Canadian Football Premier League and Canadian football as a whole, a bit about the North American footballing system. I'm going to explain the database setup I have for the save game and also touch upon the team I'm going to be managing. Now, the reason for doing this one video is basically to give you a massive overview to the save before it begins in the coming days. And additionally, if you're watching this sometime in the future, you've probably maybe stumbled upon a link for this for people who jump into the videos halfway through or want to play it themselves and want to understand a little bit more of the context and competitions that go on within the Canadian Football League system. So to start with, um, to explain my personal setup for the database that I'm using for my save game, uh, I'm using a combination of files. So the first file that I am using is the Canadian Mega Patch. Uh, this is created by Ed here. Um, I am going to be playing on the 3.0 version that was released on May 11th at the time of recording this, that is today. And uh, you can see there are two different download links here. The first is for the Canadian Mega Patch itself. Uh, within here, there is the Mega Patch 3.0 file and a continental file, a singular one. However, I am only using the Mega Patch file. And then there is a second download link, which is three separate continental files, which is what I'm using. And uh, this is uh, basically a combination. Uh, file that allows you to play with this Canadian Premier League database and the second database set that I'm using which is made by Uncle Sam over on the Sports Interactive forums. I'll have links to both of these web pages down in the description so you can pick these up yourself. Um, so yes we are using the Canadian Premier League file made by Ed and his continental files, the three of them. And then within here, Uncle Sam has basically fully fleshed out the entire of the American Football League system, including all the kind of collegiate teams. Uh, he has also done his own Canadian mods, which uh, I'm not going to be using for this. Uh, the reason for that being is that Ed's version adds all the kind of staff and players in and also includes all the graphics for this database, face packs, logo packs, stadium packs, they're all included in a singular download. Um, but as well as this, if you scroll further down, there are uh, further downloads. You can see CONCACAF competitions, for example, and there's also graphics if you so want them. So lots of download links here. To make things simple, um, these are the files within my editor data folder, which I am using for the save game. Um, so just to explain these again, we've got the mega patch file, which is available on Ed's site. Uh, we've then got the free um, kind of continental files, again from Ed's site. They are modifications of Uncle Sam's original files. And then from the Uncle Sam webpage, the SI forums, um, there are these various files for all the different kind of North American nations. You are going to want uh, the majority of these just downloaded and active, even if you don't have the country active. So those are all the different editor data bits and pieces that I have active. I hope that explains it for people wanting to know, um, you know, the exact setup. And then within my actual save game that I'm going to be using, just so you can see here, I'm going to have the Canadian Premier League and the League One Ontario leagues loaded, the Mexican First Division and MLS loaded. Uh, worth noting that with Uncle Sam's American database system, it adds in all the collegiate leagues, but they are like 20 to 30 divisions, some of them within a single tier. So if you're going to be playing in Canada like I am, uh, I recommend just having MLS loaded uh, from America, otherwise you will experience a big slowdown in your kind of simulation times. So anyway, to talk a little bit about Canada now and the Canadian Premier League, uh, I guess the first thing to talk about is the fact that Canada has never had a professional football league uh, in the 21st century. Uh, decades ago, there have been previous attempts, there have been previous teams, uh, and there have also been Canadian teams that have competed in uh, the American football system. Um, but Canada, in recent years, has not had its own professional league. You've got teams like the Ottawa Fury, who, if I'm not mistaken, play in the USL. I want to say the championship, if it's the, league, the, the USL one, I apologise. Uh, and then, of course, within MLS, the teams you're probably more familiar with, um, the likes of Toronto FC, Vancouver Whitecaps, Montreal Impact, uh, three clubs who, of course, are Canadian, but play in the American Football League system. This has inevitably caused a bit of an issue and a bit of a, uh, you know, players falling through the net within Canada. Um, Canada doesn't have a league, and so if you're uh, a young aspiring footballer and you don't make it at one of the MLS teams or maybe have a little bit of luck and have a breakthrough along the line, the chances of you going professional and developing 
are slim to none in reality if you stay within Canada. You've got to leave the country to, um, well, get over that. And while the Canadian Premier League is basically a bid to change that, of course, it's worth remembering uh, Canada, the USA and Mexico have a joint World Cup that they're now going to be holding in 2026. So with this save game, you've got six and a half years, essentially, to prepare for a World Cup. So that's kind of exciting, if you ask me. Uh, it's an opportunity for you to try and raise the Canadian Premier League up through the ranks of the continental competitions within the American footballing system and hopefully put Canadian football on the map, I guess, ahead of the World Cup. So the Canadian Premier League, as you can see here, is made up of seven clubs. Six of these are newly formed for the league. The exception for that is Edmonton, which incidentally is the team I will be managing as, so we'll talk more about them later. But yes, each one of these clubs is a brand new team. Um, as you can see, if we just look at their overviews, they're all fully fleshed out with all the graphics that come with Ed's download pack for the um, you know 3.0 mega patch. And these clubs um, have rosters. And the way that this works is it's a fully European, he says in air quotes, footballing league system. So there's no salary caps, there's no player trading um, like there is in MLS at least. And uh, each one of these clubs basically operates on a very standard, familiar system if you are from the UK or, you know, Europe. So the way that the league works is, because there's seven teams, obviously, kind of an unusual number, there's actually a split in the season. So between the start of May and July, you have the spring season. This is 10 matches that are played between the teams, and then the team who wins uh, qualify for the championship. You then have, if we just look at it here, in the autumn season, an 18-game season. So it's kind of like two mini-seasons a year. And within this autumn season, the winner again qualifies for the championship. And the championship is basically a two-legged final between the champions of the spring season and the autumn season. Of course, the autumn season is 18 games, spring season is 10, so it's a bit of an odd split, but that's just the way it works. Obviously, having seven teams in a league, as it is in real life, makes things a little bit funky when it comes to draws. So, what makes this league unique? Well, there is a big emphasis on Canadian youth development. You are not allowed more than five foreign players in the starting 11. Your squad is allowed seven foreign players to be registered and your maximum squad size is 23 players. Now, the league hasn't been too transparent on rules in terms of if you have injury crises, because, well, 23 players is not a lot of players in a squad. That is basically what you see here. If we just look at Cavalry, they've got 22 players. But this kind of squad, for what is a fairly intense schedule, is is tricky. If we just look at it here, you can see the Canadian uh, football system is intense the games come thick and fast so um, because the rules haven't been fully disclosed for that um, the way it works in this database is players who are 18 or younger at the start of the calendar year so on January 1st don't have to be registered and uh, as a result you have free reign to play your youth players and young players in the competition of course with this league being all about developing domestic young players it very much plays into that philosophy so that's the Canadian Premier League. The other big cup competition you might have noticed here is the Canadian Championship. Now this is a very, very unique competition um, in the sense that it pits the three MLS sides uh, who are Canadian, the Montreal Impact, Vancouver Whitecaps and Toronto FC, as well as Ottawa Fury, who play in the American footballing system, against the Canadian Premier League teams and there are a few other teams thrown in there as well. But this is essentially a bit like the domestic competition. In order to win this as a Canadian Premier League team, you will have, have to have beaten an MLS side. So a big focus of the save game and the challenge in Canada is going to be trying to put those MLS sides in their place. And that's going to take a lot of years to do. You're going to have to grow up the league. Um, but if you can achieve that and win this competition, you will secure a spot in the North American Champions League. So let's talk about the North American Champions League because it is kind of unique. Uh, so within North America, there are two continental competitions, the North American League and the North American Champions League. Now, the North American Champions League has four spots for American sides, four spots for Mexican sides. And then there is a qualifier called the North American League uh, in which I believe it's the top six clubs qualify for the Champions League. And the North American League, the other competition, is a bit like the Europa League. So you might wonder, how does that work? So let's talk about the North American League first, actually, before we talk about the um, 
about the uh, North American Champions League. So the North American uh, League, if we just look at it here, um, is a competition that is held basically between all North American sides that aren't in Mexico uh, or the USA. And it's a big kind of head-to-head -head thing if we just look at all the different rounds. Uh, so you have a preliminary round where some teams do get buys. There is then a first round, a quarterfinal, a semi-final and a final. The teams that make it to the semi-final and the teams that make it to the final, obviously, the same team. So these four teams here all will go into the North American Champions League uh, the following season. And then the losers of the quarterfinals will play against each other in a qualifying round. And the two winners of this competition, this round, make it through as well to the North American Champions League. So the North American League runs in the kind of summertime. It runs from, I think, July through to November here, the final and then the North American Champions League follows for the next five or six months. So you play through the North American League in the summer into the winter, and then from the winter into the summer, if you've qualified through the North American League, um, you qualify for, uh, obviously, the North, uh, the North America Champions League. I hope that makes sense. It's a little bit weird. Essentially, if you finish top six in this competition, you go into the North American Champions League, the Big Boy Cup. So as I mentioned, within Canada... There is the uh, Canadian Championship, which the MLS teams play in. That is the only way that Canadian uh, MLS sides can make it now into the North American Champions League is by winning that competition. So they are absolutely going to want to do that. And then additionally, um, there is one other spot, and that is for the winner of the playoff, you know, between the spring and autumn season winners, the Champ Canadian Championship, they will play one another, and the winner of that qualifies for the North American League. So they will have to play through that competition to make it to the Champions League. I hope that you can follow that. It's it's not as simple as it could be, but nothing ever is with American football, if I've, if, if I've learned anything within North America at least. They like to do it differently, don't they? So you might think to yourself, Jack, well, if the first season of the Canadian Premier League runs from January through to October... How do they decide who's going to go into the North American League the first season? I'm glad you've asked that question. If you weren't thinking it, I'm going to explain anyway. Essentially, Edmonton, Forge and Valo, who were the first three teams to announce their entry into the uh, Canadian Premier League, have a playoff table. And this is head-to-head -head results from the spring season. So in the spring season, Edmonton will play Valor twice, as you can see here. And they'll also play Forge twice. And basically the results of the three teams head-to-head -head within the actual league itself, within this mini table, will decide a winner. And whoever has the best league record head-to-head -head out of these three clubs will qualify for the North American League in the very first summer of the season. Right, I hope you followed. I know that was a lot to digest. We will just go on and explain that there are other two other leagues playable in Canada. You've got League One Ontario. This league has very much acted as a feeder club into the Canadian Premier League over the off-season leading into the 2019 season. And below that, we've also got this Quebecian league. I don't know if Quebecian is the, the correct term. I believe Quebec, Quebec doesn't even have a team for the first year, which is a real shame. I know there are plans in the future for them to have you know, representation in the Canadian Premier League, but there are further clubs here that you may want to manage in if you want to work your way up the Canadian footballing ladder. So that is an explanation of the Canadian Premier League and North American football. If you have any questions with regards to that, please feel free to leave it down in the comments. The last thing I want to do is explain FC Edmonton, which is the team I'm going to be managing, because obviously I've talked about the fact that I think they're an exciting team, they're an interesting team, and I also alluded to the fact that they are the only club in the Canadian Premier League that aren't newly formed. So uh, they were formed, as you can see here, in 2009. They played in the North American Leagues, uh, or the North American Super League, as I believe it was called, uh, from 2011, I think, through to when the league went defunct. Uh, when the league went defunct, FC Edmonton as a football club ceased operations. However, they kept their academy going. And after two or three years without officially existing as a senior men's team, uh, obviously they were entered into the Canadian Premier League upon its announcement and reborn, rebranded. And, uh, you know, a lot of the academy players were brought through and, well, now appear in the squad. So the reason that I've chosen FC Edmonton as the team to manage is, firstly, as an Englishman, Tommy Amiobi plays for them. Yes, this is Shola Amiobi and the other Amiobi's brother. There, there's the three brothers. I never knew there was a third in Tommy, but here he is. He's going to form a legacy with us. And when I saw him, it warmed my heart. 
If we look at information here, I don't know if it... Uh, yeah, you can see Sammy Amiobi. It's a brother. Uh, maybe we can bring Sammy back with time. Maybe, maybe we'll get them to link up. That would be good, wouldn't it? That might not be realistic, but we'll try our best. But the other reason is because, as you guys know, I really, really... I absolutely love youth player development within football... And, of course, within Football Manager, it's one of my favourite things to do. And it's something that really does resonate with me. I believe within FC Edmonton's side here, there are 10 players from the academy who have worked their way up. And additionally, um, you know, a large majority of the players here were born and or raised in Edmonton itself. So it's a really kind of homegrown club with a fairly young side with some really, really exciting players who we're going to have to do our best to develop and hopefully bring success to. And for that reason, that's why I want to manage them. You can see their media prediction first season is sixth in the Canadian Premier League. So things are not going to be easy to start things out here, here at Edmonton. But in a league with a number of new clubs, you know, newly established, they are the one team who have a little bit of history about them. And hopefully we are going to be the team to write their history within the Canadian Premier League system in FM19. So, you can see all the different clubs here. I recommend that you check out this database if you want to. As I explained, I'm using a variety of different files. Just if you want to see it again, these are the different files from the two different websites that I've shown and that will be linked down in the description that I have active for my own personal save game. If you do choose to take on this challenge, let me know how you get on. I think the big thing to do is to try and raise the Canadian Premier League's profile up through the continental reputation within North America. Obviously, try and get a Canadian Premier League team uh, to the North American Champions League would be a fantastic achievement. And maybe, just maybe, try and overthrow the MLS team's dominance uh, when it comes to the, um, you know, the Canadian knockout competition. The I want to get the name right here because otherwise I'm going to be ridiculed. The Canadian Championship, um, which of course uh, most of the CPL teams enter at the first or second round of. But anyway, guys, that is going to wrap up this video from me, giving you an overview of all this database stuff. This save game will be starting on the channel very, very soon, so do keep an eye out for it. If you've got any questions, as I've mentioned, about the database, about the league itself, feel free to ask me down below. I'm happy to answer any and all questions. And uh, yeah, if you're interested to find out more about the Canadian Premier League, I recommend you go over to the subreddit. Um, there's a quite budding community. It's a summer league, so if you're looking for something as a European football fan to keep you occupied through the summer months, you can watch it all streamed online for a subscription fee every month. And I'll let you into a little secret. I've already done that, and I've actually found it highly entertaining to watch because in a new league, where no one knows who the good and bad teams are, no one wants to defend. No one has no re any respect for one another. They all just go for each other's throats. And it makes for really entertaining football. But anyway, folks, that's going to be all from me today. If you are excited for this series, do drop a like on this video and let me know in the comments, of course, if this series is going to be something that you like and maybe you're new here. For whatever reason, do make sure to subscribe. You'll get notified, of course, when this series starts on the channel. And well, other than that, it is me, Jack, and I will talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.